Let me begin with a word of prayer. And I pray as my heart is touched and as I know your heart is touched also. Let me lead us in that prayer. Almighty God, we know that this is a tender and sensitive time. It touches us into the depths of our heart. But how grateful we are that you are a tender and sensitive Lord. The Christmas season is just, just behind us. And at that time, we are especially reminded that you came to us as one of us to show us how much you love us and how grateful we are. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Mars Henderson is in your love and care and keeping. But may we not forget in our time that we also are in your love and care and keeping. Comfort us and strengthen us. And I pray that these few moments together, you will speak to our hearts and encourage us. Forgive us of our sins. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I share with you in the beginning opening here, and that is the purpose in our heart, which you sense and I sense, and that is is that we are out, we are here out of love for Mr. Morris Henderson, and for you as family and for you as friends. And I thank God that he has placed within our hearts love and care for one another, that when we hear of the needs of those we love, our heart's desire is to go to them and be with them. And I know not only in these past couple of days, but in the weeks and months preceding, you have been there for this family, and you will be there for them in the days to come. But we are here for another reason, and that is to reflect upon Morris's life, which you do extremely well, and I will do, uh, I pray on your behalf, and just remember and honor him. But above all, we are here to reaffirm our faith in Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in him, and that he might encourage and comfort our hearts. I want to share out of the Old Testament, Psalm 121, very, very beautiful, powerful passage out of the life of King David in a time of need in his life. And this is where he affirmed his faith. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord shall not strike you by day nor the noon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And read so often at a time like this, are the beautiful words of Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. May the Lord touch our hearts in a special way. And may he speak to us in these moments that we have together.
passage of scripture the Lord has laid on my heart for these moments together which so many of us can quote by heart but I just like to have my Bible open in front of me and it's the epistle of Philippians and those opening verses where Paul is writing to the church there and he has that greeting that he uses so much Paul and Timothy bond servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and here's the verse I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine making requests for you with all joy I thank God upon every remembrance of you I've had an unusual move in my heart praying and preparing for these moments together and that is that which we have as he says I thank God for every remembrance of you what we have to be grateful for here today many many years ago a very eloquent preacher of the gospel John Claypool his family suffered a terrible, terrible loss in their family. And as a result of it, he wrote a book entitled Tracks of a Fellow Struggler. And in there, he talked about when we come to these times of life, that there's several ways that we cope with it. One is, is that we just resign. We just kind of give up and, well, that's that and that's that. Or some on the other extreme try to rationalize it and explain it away and help us to understand it better. But he said he had found that the best way was the way of gratitude and to thank God, to thank God for every day, to thank God for the people in our life, to thank God for his being with us and seeing us through times like this. And so the Apostle Paul said, you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for y'all. And I pray that you will hear my heart, and that is because I, I have that sense in my heart, and that is that, you know, we, we do have some things here today to be grateful for. And it's an unusual situation for me where I stand and speak on behalf of a family, on behalf of an individual that I did not get to know that well, but what I knew I liked. I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to tell you the first thing that I believe that this family has to be thankful for is that 
Morris Henderson obviously was a great guy, absolutely a great guy. When I read what you wrote in the Tribute article, it just really touched my heart, and when I close in a moment, I'll let you know how much it closed, touched my heart. It speaks here, of course, with his service with CSX, his service to our nation in the Korean War, and a member of Sweat Memorial Baptist Church. But it says, Morris loved a garden, and he grew beautiful green vegetables. He was an amazing craftsman who could build anything. He loved to travel and dance. Okay, all right, we're okay. <laughs> I like that. But that tells me something about him, that he loved to travel, loved to dance, and I'm just amazed at the generation that he is from that he loved to try new food and new things. And we just don't usually see that in a person. Morris was fondly known for his delicious barbecue chicken. He had a big heart and amazing love for people. He never met a stranger. And he always tried to make everyone around him happy with his lightning quick sense of humor, joke, or story. Morris was a wonderful husband and father who always put his family first. And I can tell by that paragraph there, but also can tell by the witness and the testimony of the family that is gathered here today that obviously, obviously y'all were blessed with an incredible, great guy. And that is to begin with and that he and Naomi celebrated 66 years of marriage. Somebody did something right. And it had to be both of you. It had to be both of you. And then I don't know all the family, but I have become acquainted over the past couple of years with the children. And they are exceptional people. And I have met some grandchildren over the past couple of years. And as you go through the family tree, it's a very, very, very wonderful, exemplary family. And that all goes back to Morris and Naomi, and obviously a great, great guy. I think about the great theologian, and just forget the name, it won't mean anything maybe to some of you, Karl Barth, German theologian, and one day a student walked into his study and asked for an autographed copy of his works. And that wasn't the first time somebody wanted Dr. Barth to sign a book and give to him. Well, Dr. Barth was ready. And he opened the middle drawer of his desk and pulled out a picture of his family and autographed them and handed it to him and said, these are my works, and here's an autographed copy. <laughs> well, isn't that right? I'm looking at y'all's works, and it takes great people to turn out great works like this, absolutely great works. And I think about here, and I, I share, uh, I had two wonderful visits after COVID that first wave began to kind of we felt lighten up and we all had our we all had our shots and that's not a political statement but uh you know he wanted me to come by and see him and for us to meet in person they'd been listening on the radio not only at sweat but for many years before that and so I went to see him went to visit them and it was a wonderful visit he was doing very well and that big recliner sitting there, uh, all, of, all the time of our visit, he was perched right up on the edge of it, very animated, very exuberant, very personable, you know, just a, a very, very, you know, excited kind of individual. And when I read this, I think about, wow, that's exactly the kind of person he was. And then he never met a stranger, and I told him last night at prayer meeting, that he looked at me and he said, uh, have you met anybody in that church yet you didn't like? So I told him in prayer meeting, I bit my tongue and swallowed hard and said, no, I've not met anybody in that church I didn't like. <laughs> and I said, no, uh, and, and I'm serious. I'm not uh, advertising, but it's a good advertisement. Sweat Memorial is a lovely, sweet church. And Mars loved that church, and that church loves this family. 
And when he said, have you ever met anybody there you didn't like? And I said, no, I have not. They're sweet, wonderful people. And he said, that's what I found. And I don't know how many years he was a member there, but it's been a long time. Uh, you know, just an incredible, uh, wonderful, wonderful person that y'all have been blessed with. And I encourage this. Right now, memories are kind of painful. I try not to bring my personal life in too much, but many in the church know because I share it whenever I think it's appropriate that my father passed very suddenly uh, at the age of 60 uh, in a Georgia power plant on, on his regular shift, and we don't know what happened other than family history of heart and things like that. And uh, I have a hard time keeping track of the count. It was 1986, and, and I think Dad would be 95 or 96 years old now. And, and we're talking, you know, we're talking uh, 36 years. He was only 60 years old. We're talking a long time. But I'm going to tell you, my dad was a funny man, and he was a good dad. And I have two younger brothers, and every time we're together, all these years later, we're still talking about Dad. Well, that's what I want for y'all. Y'all just keep on talking about Morris. Keep on celebrating him. Keep on remembering him because it is obvious to me, obvious to me, that he absolutely was a great guy. And so, as John Claypool said, be thankful. Be sad, but be thankful for him. The second thing that the Lord impressed upon my heart is how blessed we are, how blessed we are to serve a loving God, to serve a loving God. You know, people ask so many times that when these times come up in our life and the church responds and we have our faith, and they want to know, they say, you know, what do people do that don't have a church? Or what do people do that don't know Jesus Christ? Well, they just do, I think. Because I've known the Lord all my life, and I've been in church all my life, and I can't even fathom what it would be like not to have, and I've seen my share of heartache as to what it would be like to not have the church to rally around me and not to have that hope. In Jesus Christ and that prayer that I pray I, I meditate on prayers and God gives me new ways to express and he's given me that prayer in the past couple of years that this is a tender and sensitive time but that our God is a tender and sensitive God and he mourns with us he grieves with us and his heart is touched like our hearts are touched. But the hope that we have in him, the hope that we have in him, our salvation, our eternal life, that he will never leave us or forsake us, and that he loves us and cares for us. And so John Claypool said one of the ways to handle the grief times in our life is to thank God for the memories and I had a fella in First Baptist Blackshear that he'd go out on a regular Sunday and he would say, I thank God for God. And then he'd say, where would we be without God? Well, I pray that this time will strengthen our faith. We will recommit our lives to Jesus Christ and that we will walk even closer with him because he is walking close with us. And I come kind of full circle here in this moment. And that is not only do I have that sense that y'all were blessed with a great guy. And I know that we're blessed with a great God. But I am thankful that there's a great day coming, friends. There's a great day coming. And that is, as the church at Thessalonica wrote to the Apostle Paul or maybe asked him in person, because in that day they expected Jesus to return in the next day or two weeks or the next month. And he didn't. It's been 2,000 years. 
And they wanted to know of the Apostle Paul, of their loved ones who had passed, where are they? Will we ever see them again? And the Apostle Paul wrote to them in, th in 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, they're with Jesus. They're with the Lord, and one day he's coming back, and he's going to bring them back. And we're going to be caught up in the air, and we're going to be together with them forever. And I'm telling you, friend, there's a great day coming. Amen? And I tell people, I've not seen my parents for the last time. I've not seen, as some of you know, my family history. I've not seen my wife for my last time. And y'all have not seen Mars for the last time. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? You've not seen him for the last time. Well, here's where this has touched me in a personal way. And that is... Uh, my heart has gone in two different directions today. As the family knows, I did a service at noon today at First Baptist Blackshear with a man that I knew very well and served extremely close with for the 21 years I was there. And uh, I tell people, you know, I have a real problem as a minister. I just can't keep a church, you know. I, I just can't keep one, you know. <laughs> I'm going to keep sweat for a long time. But Eddie Whitted... And Eddie was a Vietnam vet, and he, he had some suffering from that experience. But he devoted himself to veterans. And our clinic here was the, a big part to Eddie's vigilance and diligence. He was on the governor's uh, veterans board of service, and the commissioner of that board came down and took part in the service. And I'm, I, I missed my good friend. Eddie as I was doing that service today but also in preparing for this service I grieved in a different way and a sense of loss that I didn't get to spend any more time with Morris because we would have had a good time now we would have had a good time and that's when the Lord impressed upon my heart well don't be sad because one day you and Morris We'll catch up. Amen? Amen. So when that day comes, I'm ahead of the line. I want you to know that. Because I do. I want to get to know this man better. And I thank God that there's a great day coming. Amen. And we will all be able to spend, to spend some time together. And I do. I feel in my heart. And that's been one of my touching points at sweat. And that is of the grand, grand generation that meant so much to that church and to so many, I've come here at their time to move on to their reward. And so I'm looking forward to heaven. I'm looking forward to heaven. And uh, I'm going to ask Morris, <laughs> have you met anybody up here you didn't like? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm going to ask if you met anybody up here you didn't like, and he might tell me, well, you might want to skip that person over there. I don't know, but uh, but we'll see. And I didn't mean, but I, I would have enjoyed him. I'm telling you, I would have had a good time with Mars Henderson, and uh, I know y'all had a good time with him also. And so the apostle said, I thank God upon every remembrance of you, and that is y'all were blessed. And we're blessed with a great God. And we're blessed with the hope of a great, great day. I think that I close with prayer. And then there's going to be another piece of music. Am I right, Bradley? Close with prayer. And I want to offer a prayer that I pray is not only a benediction, but is a blessing upon you. And that is, may the peace that passes all understanding and the power that overcomes all things. Keep your hearts and minds now and forevermore through Christ Jesus our Lord in whose name we pray. Amen. Y'all just keep on being this wonderful family. Thank you.